Hi guys, my name is Ben. I will be teaching you how to deal with series for AP Calculus AB and BC. We're going to begin our lecture with topic of sequence. So let's go over the agenda first. As you can see, we're going to start with the definition and we're going to move on to how to write a sequence and if something is not a sequence in, in a sequence form, you're going to learn how to recognize it. And also we're going to learn how limits work within sequence and we are going to learn about convergence and divergence, which are the most important topic. Um, and we're also going to learn about mono monotonic sequence theorem in which we're going to cover monotonic sequences and bounded sequence. So let's begin with the definition. This should be a simple review for you guys. So a sequence is basically a list of numbers that lists um, numbers in a specific pattern. And there are three typical ways to uh, write a sequence. And we're going to go over three of them right now. So one way is to write a sequence with the braces, with the starting point and the end point. The other way is just simply writing it as a n equals n over n plus 1. And the last way starts with a the first few terms of the sequence. And in this case, when we start with n equals 1 and move on to 2, 3, 4, what we're going to get is 1 over 2, 2 over 3, 3 over 4, 4 over 5, and so on until we get our general term. So these are the th three typical ways. And for the purpose of our, of our lecture, we're going to stick to this method. So we're going to begin with a very simple example. So we're going to find the formula for, this, for the general term a n for the following sequence. You should recognize a pattern. And you can see that this is 1 over 1, 1 over 3, 1 over 9, 1 over 27, and so on. So what's the pattern here? These are multiples of 3, right? So it can be, and it's always 1 at the top. So we know for sure that's 1. And since it's, this is multiples of 3, we have to use exponent. And it seems like it is 1 over 3 n minus 1. Why is it not just simply 1 over 3 n? Because if we have 1 over 3 n and begin with n equals 1, it should have been 1 third, 1 ninth, 1 27th, and so on. But we began with 1 instead, correct? So we have to consider that there was n minus 1 so that we can get this first term correctly. So let's begin with a more complex definition. So just like functions, um, we, sequences ha can have limits as well. And it's illustrated in this definition. So when we have limit n goes to infinity for any sequence, and that approaches L, then that L is the limit of the sequence. And in fact, if this holds true for any sequence, then we say that that sequence is convergent. So what does convergent exactly mean? Let's begin with a simple example. So notice that this is very similar to our previous example, except the negative 1. And let's take a look at a graph of this sequence. So as you can see, the points are alternating from positive to negative, positive to negative, and you can see that it's approaching zero, correct? So that zero, we can write, and limit of n goes to infinity for this particular sequence was actually approaching zero. And the points were converging to a single point, meaning 
that this was convergent. So let's move on to example two. So this example is asking us to evaluate this limit of a sequence. So a lot of students uh, ask whether there is a different approach to solving limits for sequence versus functions, but it turns out that they're the exactly same. So we are going to simplify the following equation. Why? Because if I don't simplify and just simply substitute infinity to the ends over here, it will be infinity over infinity, which is indeterminate. So we are going to multiply 1 over n, and we, I got that from the biggest numerator power. And that will become 1 over 1 plus n over 1. So now we can sub substitute infinity to this n, which becomes 0 because 1 over infinity is 0. And so that equals 1. So for this sequence, it had a limit, and limit's value was 1. So let's take a look at a graph of this. Because according to our theory, uh, if we have a limit for a sequence, it has to be convergent. So let's verify that through the graph. So what you see here is a sequence graph of n over n plus 1. And you can see that all the dots are moving towards reaching the number 1, which was our limit. So again, this proves our theorem that if there is a limit, and that limit equals a number and not infinity, then your sequence will be convergent 